Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. I want to ask you guys, how many of you have something similar to this uh, where the foundation or a door was removed or a wall was removed and now you're stuck with the foundation showing and nothing but the slobbers and if you look at the rest of the, the property, it just does not go with it. That's some pretty looking stuff. They even have a, a, a mountain that has a waterfall coming down. This just doesn't look right. So this fellow, he sent me an email last night and uh, he showed it to me. And I said, yeah, we can fix this. He says, you don't need to see it first. I said, I see it in the picture. Uh, gave him a call. He said, come do it. So we're here to do it. Let me show you guys something. Uh, if you've got something like this, I'm sure the camera won't show and you guys won't be able to see. There's a different texture here than there is there. This uh, used to have a sliding glass door here. So when they removed that, the step that they had here created this uh, odd look. Here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to get rid of these slobbers. Then what we're going to do is clean up this existing foundation. How can you clean it up? Well, if I use a pressure washer, that's easy, but then I make a big mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire brush this after we clean it up. We've got to get rid of all the slobbers first. That will create dust. We'll hose it down, we'll wire brush it, then we're going to put a bonding agent over this. And yeah, we use a blue bonding agent called Larson's, but if you guys go to Home Depot, you can get uh, Quickrete. They make a bonding agent too. And the bonding agent is just painted on this. And that will allow us to mix some Portland cement and sand and fill this up. But again, first we've got to get rid of these slobbers. Um, I'll show you guys how to get rid of the slobbers. And I'll give you a couple tips. Now, if you use a hatchet, you'll be here all day. You'll go. You'll just you'll chip it off like that, guys. You can do that. You can do that. Sure. It, it's not that hard. You just chip it off. But... You could also use a uh, muscle, uh, say you get, and this is how you can lose a fingernail, guys. How many fingernails have I lost doing this? <laughs> More than my share. You could take, um, this is a wood chisel, but I've got other steel chisels in there. You could take it and just tap it, and you can get it off like that too. But at, uh, that's a slow way. And it's using muscle. Or you can do what we do. And just use a battery operated tool. And here's one last tip guys. If you're using a 2 inch blade, good luck. You'll be here forever. Put just a half inch uh, blade on it. And now let the, let the machine do the work. And you use skill. See now I'm using skill. I could use muscle. But I want to save that muscle for applications and for later on when I go to another job that we have uh, which is a lot harder so save the muscle use the skill get yourself some battery operated tools and or just tap it off could you use just the hammer sure you can we don't generally show too much of this because the dust goes in the air and gets on Jason's camera anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretty this up and get rid of all the clinkers then the next time you see us this will be, it's going to be blue, and that's just the bonding agent we use. And we're going to put it in buckets. I'm going to scrape it out of the buckets, and I'm just going to fill this up. And we'll show you how to match this texture here. I'll show you how to match this texture here, too. Uh, you may say, I can't tell the difference. Well, I can, and that's what matters. So when we get to that stage, we'll show you that. Okay, guys, now is the fun part. Jay mixed me up two buckets of cement. And what is this? This is Portland cement mixed with one part Portland cement, three parts sand. And then he put luminite in it. Luminite is an accelerator. <laughs> We're not sure which bucket's which. One has a five minute mud, the other has a 10 minute mud. But we'll make it work. Here's the thing you folks got to remember if you're going to do this. Under here is a lip. There's a big lip under here. So when I hosed it off and I wire brushed it, I made sure to get my bonding agent under this lip. This blue stuff, that's just the bonding agent I use. Uh, we're tying in rocks, so um, 
I put a little extra wire there. I'll show you how we do this, guys. <coughs> Number one is uh, when you apply it, you want to squeeze it under here. You squeeze it under there. That's the most important part because throughout this, it'll just keep dropping and dropping and dropping. So we don't want that. Now, I think this is the five-minute mud. Okay, so we take a five-minute mud. What if this sets in two minutes? <laughs> Nothing I can't handle. What if it sets in ten? Nothing I can't handle. Okay, so we take this mud here. Now we put it on, on here. Now remember, we want to go underneath this. So we put it on, and we squeeze it under there. Squeeze it hard, guys. Use a lot of muscle, because that's the important part. Get it under there, and make it adhere. Otherwise, throughout this entire job, it's going to be dropping out. But we don't want that. We don't want... You see how it has a tendency to want to drop out. That's good right there. Now I take some more here, and I do the exact same thing. Now I'm using a little bit of muscle. I'm pushing it in there. Uh... Because once that sets in five minutes, I can put my next coat on. I don't know if the camera will show this because we have mesh wire here. But the same thing. And if you guys can't squeeze it under there, use both hands. Because that's the important part. All right. So we're going to take some more mud. And can you put it on a board and stand? Sure you can. I just find it faster just to scoop it out of this bucket with this little... Stucco scooper. Okay, so we're going three inches here. So we're going to go three inches. I got to start from the bottom. I got to give it something to adhere to. All right. So here we put it on. And now where I got this wire, that's actually five inches, guys. So I'm going to push it. And without the wire, I would have to do it twice. I'm still going to have to do it twice because that's thick. And we wanted to tie that brick in. He says, hey, can you tie that brick in? Or the rock? I said, of course I can. If you look at his waterfall there, I built waterfalls. We've stuck on a mountain. You see what I'm talking about? Okay. Now that is smooth right here, but it's five inches thick, so it's going to fall. That's okay. So I'm going to take some of this mud here now and tie these rocks in. And what I want to do is I want to squeeze it all the way in back of there. So all this mud on here, <coughs> it's going to go in back of that wire. I just keep squeezing it, squeezing it, and get it in back of that wire. And sure, if it falls off, I expect it to fall off. I've been doing this way too long to think it's going to just adhere. It, uh, this takes practice. Like, even with this fast set mud, it's going to take some practice. Now, what I've got here is I'm just going to put a little bit here. And I'm going to let this set. I'm going to let it set for about, oh, 10 minutes. Because in 10 minutes, <laughs> this has got luminite in it. L-U-M-I-N-I-T-E. Luminite. And that sets stucco without compromising the strength. It doesn't compromise the strength one bit. So I'm going to fill me up again here. And of course, he's going to put tile over this. So there is no need to cover that. I'm going to take out just what I need right here. OK, so from here, I'm going to squeeze my way over here. Get out of my way. And take it the same thing and slam that out. Slam it out. Right here. Is it ready for the second coat? Not really. But since I'm right here, I'll see what I got. You see how that falls? Because there's a gap in the back. How do you fix that? Time in. You just push it in there with the tip or the toe of your trowel. That'll set in about... 10 minutes. Now again, what you don't see here is the amount of pressure I'm putting on it. I want it to go underneath here. And I've seen it already. I've seen a big gap there. And I thought, uh-oh. Not anything we can't handle, but folks need to be aware. So this is just the first coat. Now, let's see here. I'm going to take off 
take out the, the rest of the mud from this bucket. By the way, these scoops have a tendency to be able to follow the curve of the bucket. And I can clean this bucket almost where there's only like a thumbnail or a, a, a tiny bit left in there. So we've got the mud. Again, watch it fall out. See how it's falling out? Here's what I'll do, guys. I know we got a big gap. So I use both hands. Get in there. Get in there. And that just gets it in there tighter. And guess what? It mushrooms now. It adheres by mushrooming. Kind of like interior plaster. It mushrooms. Now, so what I'm going to do here is get the rest of this mud out of here, out of this one bucket. What Jay and I did is we got here. And I looked at it, I said, a wheelbarrow full. A wheelbarrow full is four buckets. Jay thought, maybe three, maybe three and a half. That's how clean that bucket is. Okay, now we start on this stuff. And we kind of lost track which one was the five minute mud and which one was the 10. But either way, ooh, this is stiff. I actually do want it stiff, guys, like this because we don't want to be around here watching paint dry. We want to just get this done, float it, and then texture it. You see right now, this is too thick, and I'm using a too large a trowel to make it go in there. Now if I was using a 16, I could probably get it in there, but I can do this just as well. I'm taking this mud here, bringing it over. And I'm going to do the same thing in that corner, but I'm going to use my, I'm going to still use my pull trowel. So again, we take the mud out. I can feel this mud getting stiff. So what I want to do is hustle. And because it's so stiff now, I no longer have the luxury of having the strength in one hand to put it on. See that? It takes a lot of strength. So what I'm going to do is just do that. Do that. That. Come on out of there. 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 Because again, this is going to get covered. That's going to get covered with stone. So now what I'm going to do is just Take this mud here and pull it up in it because it's already getting stiff. There's a big hole under there. And we are going three and a half to four inches thick. Can we handle it? Of course we could. Three and a half to four inches thick. The idea is to get it to mushroom in the back. And that's not a problem. You see how that dropped because it didn't mushroom in the back. A lot of pressure. This actually... You can use a lot of muscle, guys, or you could use a lot of skill and use soupy mud, do a coat, let it set, come back tomorrow, do another coat, let it set, come back tomorrow. Do I want to do that? No, no, no. I don't have the patience to do something like that. And if I'm coming three, four times, I've got to charge the homeowner for that. So I don't want to make myself uh, too expensive for the job. So I'm doing it in one shot. I'm just using a little bit of learned skills, guys. Okay. So now, now that I got this on, I'm going to let this set. And what I'm going to do is use the rest of this bucket and fill this all in right here because this is a very hot mud. And when I come back to... To this, I'll show you how we uh, trim it out or float it or hard rubber float it to get it uh, straight, true, and plumb. All right, guys, let me show you where we're at now. Jay makes one last bucket because I use two full buckets here. Now, now, granted, we are in the shade. It's really chilly out here. This wall is ice cold and it's sealed. 
So when we put our bonding agent on that sealed cold surface, and it's windy too, it's taken a lot longer to dry. So it's been about 15 minutes. I expected five because Jay puts luminite into the mixed buckets. How stiff is this right now? Let's find out. Kirk's the best. <laughs> anyway, it's stiff enough. It's stiff enough for two things. If you guys do this, take yourself a scratcher and put it on and just scratch it like that. And that way you can come back another day because now my next coat has got to be soupier than this. If it's stiffer than this, then it defeats the whole purpose. I push it too hard, and it takes this coat off. So it's got to be a little soupier. Anyway, so here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to put my, I'm going to put a follow-up coat on here. And this is just a, this is the last coat right here. And what I'm doing with this coat here is I'm chewing everything out so that it's um, level. So that it's plum. It's plum with uh, what I've got here. Uh, I'll start at this corner and just take you to here. And then when that sets, I'll show you how we float it. Okay, so all I'm doing now is looking at it and I'm judging it and getting everything true and plum. That just means that it's going to be straight. And do I need a Darby? Uh, not really. A Darby is just something that two-handled magnesium and you could put it on here to make it truer. It's, it's easier than using a, a trowel. Now notice now I'm putting this on here and it's not falling down because it's setting. Could it still fall? Sure it could. If I disturb the first coat enough. So I'm trying not to disturb the first coat too much. Okay, so here I'm going. I'll show you guys a tip too where because I use this what is it's called a pull trowel. Not P U L L like you pull something, but a pull, P O O L, like swimming pull trowel. Let me get rid of this last hawk full. Just anywhere, just to prove a point. Okay. Now you guys if you have a square trial, which I do have a square trial, thank you, you can do this. You don't want to, you don't want to put a wet or a dry trial on stuff because it'll drag. If you want to chew this out where it's plumb, you can do two things. You can look at it and pull it straight up, use a Darby, or just put this trial on edge. And take it like that. And now I'm letting the bottom straighten it out. If it falls, it's okay. Just put it back in. That's one way you can do it. If you got it real full, you can just take it this way and pull it off. If the pull off any excess. Now I'm using this as a guide. See that? Okay, that's just showing you something. I don't do that as a rule because. I'm past that stage. But anyway, what I'm going to do now on video is I'm going to finish this area here because we are five inches thick. So when we're five inches thick, uh, we want to at least get that part done. And I don't need much more over there. Maybe uh, this much right here. So we're five inches thick here. So now what I want to do is is fill it up all the way and I don't know if you guys may understand this but if it's really thick I hold the trowel on edge like this now you see that's nasty looking it that means it opens it if I seal it like this see how flat that is that's the trowel it won't dry I need this to dry immediately because it's cold the walls cold and I don't want to be here all day. That's for you folks who 
Oh, not really sure how to do it? You can be here all day. And so the last thing I got to do is put some mud in between here. And so, as I'm including that corner, uh, get in there. I include that corner and incorporate these rocks so that it doesn't move. And then what I'm going to do now, guys, is you're not going to see this on camera, but I will show you how we texture it on camera. I'm going to take, this is a polyurethane float or a hard rubber float. You can use a cork one. You could use a plastic one. And all I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm just going back and forth and I'm coming up. Now this, it sets it faster because it opens it. If I use a steel trowel, this closes it. It won't set. It won't set for an hour if I do that. So I'm putting this right here so it could open it. It can breathe. And all I'm doing is just using it, going in a straight line, and making it chew and plumb. This excess stuff here, I could use it over there. Same day materials, you cannot use it again because it's it's compromised but this is Portland cement you can play with it forever and see that's that's what I'm gonna do right here I'm just gonna take this and just keep going just like this I mean you could you could use the wall guys use the wall and feel it I'm I'm feeling the bottom and I'm just pulling it up this part you don't see I'm pulling it up I'm pulling it up into the existing, into the existing, guys, and just following that edge. Follow the edge. This flat part follows that edge, and you pull it up. And you see that, guys? If I can do it without looking, surely you can do it with looking. And you want to pull up hard because we want this to stay in there. Then when that's done, finally, you see all this grit? The way they did this is they did exactly what I'm doing. This wall, they floated. They took, now we're talking about a sponge float, guys. This is a sponge float. If I take the sponge float, I can pull it upward. And what does this do? It brings out the aggregate. Okay, so we're bringing out the aggregate now. It's just bringing out the aggregate right here because they brought the aggregate out. And when I go to do this texture, actually, this is a blob job. That's a Spanish lace or a skip trowel. <laughs> this is called a blob job. When I do this blob job, I'm going to do it in a different color because Jay said, well, Dad, if you do that with the same cement, it's not going to show. And I thought, do you have color coat? And he said, yeah, I got some color coat. So he's going to mix me a little color finish. And then I'll show you how we do this texture here. And I'll show you how we do that texture there. And by then, you'll be a professional. You won't need to call us. All right, guys. I said earlier we'd show you the texture. This side is done. And in that little corner over there. You may not be able to see the difference, but here, what we did was we hard rubber floated it, then we put the skip trial on it. Here, um, I left it sand floated. I took the sponge float and I brought the aggregate out. That's that sandy stuff because they have sandy stuff. Then they textured over it. So the transition is right here. So uh, anyway, I'll show you. Okay, if you're going to do a skip trial finish, you can just put a little bit on and you just light hand and pull up with it. Pull up with it a little bit because we got to match that. What they got, whatever they got, we got to match. So that's it. I'll put a little bit on this corner. And now, because they kind of knocked it down a little bit, I'll just hit it a little bit, knock it down. And that gives it the same appearance of what they have. Now over, over here where the guys who changed out the door, these guys what they did is they put on the brown coat and they brought the sand out or the aggregate and that's it right there. So the sand is prevalent and the, pa the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the texture is what we call a, a blob job or a pancake. 
okay, rather than skip it like I did here, you know, we, we, we skipped it a little bit. That's okay. So what, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pancake it. And what does that mean? That's a pancake finish. Uh, we kind of just, we hold our, instead of holding it this way, we kind of flatten it out a little bit. And that's all it takes, guys. The homeowner came out earlier and he says, wow, that looks pretty good, man. What would you do with all that excess mud? You know, we, we clean up with a sponge float. We clean it up, put it in the bucket, and keep moving. And I said, well, you got a swimming pool right there, man. I just cleaned out in there. <laughs> and he looked at me. I said, I'm kidding, man. He says, well, how about I don't pay you? I said, hey, that's not funny. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> funny guy here. So what we're doing is we're, we're still doing the same thing. We're doing a... The blob job, that's a blob job, or I guess there's a technical name for it, a pancake finish. I, I got a habit of trying to, rather than pancake it, do a normal skip trial. I find myself doing a normal skip trial, and I'm thinking, stop it, Kirk. Don't do a normal skip trial. Give it the same pancake look. Okay, so the pancake look. We just flatten it out a little bit more. Give it a few pancakes. Last piece right here. We just put a little bit more pancake stuff on it. And boom, that's done. And that way when they paint all this stuff, it matches. <laughs> It'll match two different areas, but I'm stuck with whatever wall I'm working on. And when I showed him, he says, man, I, don't need, I, didn't, I never even saw that difference. <laughs> All right, folks, as always, thank you for watching another Giordano Stucco video. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe so we can keep making them. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.